a 26-year-old commercial pilot with 310 total hours, was building her flight time by flying medical specimens from a rural clinic. The route involved a two-hour flight over mountainous terrain in an unpressurized aircraft equipped with supplemental oxygen. The route mostly required flying at 11,000 feet to safely clear the mountains. On this night, she climbed to 12,500 feet to get above a broken cloud deck. She decided that it might be a good idea to use supplemental oxygen even though the anticipated duration of her flight at 12,500 feet was likely to be less than 30 minutes. However, just before descent, she experienced unusual and frightening symptoms which caused her to make an appointment with her AME. She reported symptoms of lightheadedness, palpitations, and tingling. She also recalled difficulty reading her electronic checklist as it appeared dimmer than usual. Welcome to Aerospace Medicine Grand Rounds. Speaking about this case today, we have Dr. Roger Bisson from the Civil Aerospace Medical Institute. Please welcome Dr. Bisson. This airman exhibited lightheadedness, palpitations, tingling, and vision changes that are certainly consistent with hypoxia, which is just a lack of oxygen to various tissues in the body. Some of the observable signs of hypoxia can include rapid breathing, cyanosis, sluggishness, and poor judgment. And some of the symptoms such as she reported might include air hunger, dizziness, headache, mental fatigue, the tingling which she reported, as well as visual impairment and euphoria. I'm wondering if any of you out there have any thoughts on this case. I'm a physician and I'm also a pilot. I have seen hyperventilation in an anxious pilot mimic hypoxia. Do you think she was truly hypoxic or could she have been hyperventilating? That's an excellent question. Hyperventilation can certainly mimic hypoxia. And this airman, she decided to use supplemental oxygen, which is equipment that she's not very familiar with. And so she may have been hyperventilated by putting on the mask or nasal cannula or whatever she used for the supplemental oxygen. The other question you have to ask yourself is whether or not she used the supplemental oxygen equipment properly in terms of turning it on to proper flow rates and things like that. One of the things you can do in your office is ask her if she's had similar symptoms in the past and ask her to actually hyperventilate for you and see if that reproduces her symptoms. That can often be a guide of whether or not it was truly hyperventilation versus hypoxia. You also need to ask yourself whether or not this could have been carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide poisoning is very common. It causes about 40,000 ER visits and 6,000 deaths per year and is certainly common in single-engine single airplanes. Another consideration in a pilot like this with hypoxia is to ask about hobbies. If she uses paint remover to refinish furniture and things like that, the methylene chloride in paint, common paint removers can cause a large increase in carboxyhemoglobin even without exposure to carbon monoxide. Another question you might ask yourself is whether she was anemic. Uh, and it's certainly common for women of this age to be anemic. It can certainly cross gender guidelines, and anemia can make you more susceptible to hypoxia. Are there any other questions? Well, I was wondering if she might have had any other physiological problems like asthma, or was she a smoker, or perhaps mild COPD? These are certainly worth considering. COPD, of course, exists in older populations, and we all know that as you age, you just do become more sensitive to hypoxia. But she's a young pilot, and then if she had asthma, I would have expected her to report some of these asthmatic symptoms. Uh, you do need to consider whether or not she was a smoker. So certainly that tobacco or carbon monoxide from tobacco smoke can reduce altitude tolerance by five to 6,000 feet. And we all know that carbon monoxide has 200 times the affinity to hemoglobin as oxygen. She did report her night vision symptoms were as being decreased, and night vision is decreased by 20% in smokers. Finally, even if she's not a smoker, you do have to consider or not whether or not she had any exposure to secondhand smoke, which could have also made her more sensitive to hypoxia. Any other questions? I recall several news reports about plane crashes due to pilot incapacitation from hypoxia. At what altitude would a pilot actually lose consciousness? There really is no single altitude where a pilot would lose consciousness. There certainly have been several very high profile accidents where a gradual loss of cap cabin pressure have caused the crew to become incapacitated due to hypoxia. Just as a frame of reference, at 18,000 feet, the time of useful consciousness is generally about 20 to 30 minutes. And at 35,000 feet, the altitude most 
airliners fly at, the time of useful consciousness is 30 to 60 seconds. And if you have a rapid decompression, the time of useful consciousness is decreased by as much as 50% or more. And this airman, she was only mildly hypoxic, having flying at 12,500 feet, but the concern of any degree of hypoxia is that it impairs mental and motor coordination and performance. Thank you so much. I enjoyed taking your questions today.